Alrighty then, it's time for us to get out of this um, weird um, doctor ward part of the tower. Oh, we're actually almost at the top though. We have om and yeah, we have almost all of these. Just missed one thing here. Uh, but yeah. I can't believe that such a collection of fine and healthy organs can combine to make up a clueless creature like you. Believe me, you'll be a lot more useful to society in pieces. Nah, I'm good. What is it that is? Oh, we need we need to chloroform. I think the diary set. Um, which we can find in here. We need to drill. A little helping hand and his anesthetist. Anesthetist. Your personal pocket anesthetist. It can put anyone you choose to sleep. Lol. Great work, detective. We're almost there. To finish what we started, you need one thing. A powerful artifact is located on one of the upper floors of the tower. The magic staff of one of the builders of the tower. He used it to seal the gate when he sacrificed his last victim. This is why only its power can stop Beatrix. Okay. You didn't realize I'm still not trusting you or anything, but... Right? Oh, we're in a gallery. Next floor up contained an art gallery. No, oh, wait a minute. Uh, I defeated Dr. Anderson by putting him to sleep with one of his own hands. I then met Lily by the stairs. She told me I needed to find the staff that belonged to one of the builders of the tower. The staff was a very, uh, was the very artifact the wizard used to seal the gates, and it was hidden in one of the upper floors of the tower. As it looked, as I looked through Beatrice's journal, I learned Dr. Anderson was the first victim of the Barston sisters. The witch had lured him to the tower and then cast a spell that trapped his soul there. Over time, however, Beatrice began to doubt her actions were justifiable and lost confidence in Lily, as she believed Lily was forcing her to sacrifice innocent souls. This is how the conflict between the two sisters began. <clears throat> <clears throat> the next floor up contained an art gallery, where the soul of artist Chris Cole was locked in a portrait of his own making. He was an average artist, but after he purchased some enchanted paint, horrible things started happening to the people whose portraits he created. Unfortunately, that didn't stop him from painting, and he was sacrificed to the tower. Alright, can I click something here? Nope. March 7th, 1984. Lily becomes unbearable. Moreover, she has something in her mind. She's constantly saying something about horror and death behind the sealed gate. What nonsense! She's telling nonsense about people who fell victims of the tower. What for? And it's me who she calls crazy. The 30 years, she's still a silly and naive girl. I can't see what's painted there. A famous conqueror of the universe, Mr. Balor. The poor thing wanted a son, but his wife gave birth to a girl. Stairs go up, but they're not finished. What would happen if we, if you drew them? I beg you, please comfort the soul of a poor artist. I used to be an ordinary artist, but then my life changed. A merchant sold me some unusual paints, and then I started creating masterpieces. However, the merchant didn't warn me about something important. Horrible things started happening to the people I painted. If only I'd stopped, but I couldn't. Now here I am, paying for my sins. All I ask is for you to return my paints so I can finish my final work. It's a painting of my gallery. Take this magic eraser. You'll need it. Okay, thank you. Artist's table. Ooh, rainbow. The flower doesn't look finished. What do you think? Oh, I agree, it's not finished. Huh. 
<laughs> Magic indeed. All right, where's that last item? I don't know. Ah, there it is. All right, we got a sun. Oh, here. February 21st, 1985. I no longer wish more kidnappings and victims. It's over. I thirst for knowledge. What does the other side of the sealed gate keep? Knowledge? Power? How many secrets I can learn if I open the cursed sealed gate? Lily cannot stop me. Okay, so basically they're both crazy. Of course, an unfinished painting serves as the lock on the cabinet in the artist's workshop. Who else would have thought of this? Oh, here we go. Went mad and ruined his paintings. Let's fix them. Okay, so we can, like, step into it. It's a part of me! I like it! What do you think? Damned artist. His paintings brought us to the madness. A famous antique trader falls in love with his own portrait and kills his wife. Oh, Dorian Gray? Who will held May 13th, 1985. Look what I have, take it. I lost a locket with a portrait of my Lucy. Have you seen it? I miss her. Well, we'll see if I can find it, maybe. Because I probably can. After some searching. Knife and shell. Um, shell. Now, where's this bug, though? Oh, never mind. I found it. Played. Butterfly. My husband and I admired these cursed portraits so much, we couldn't agree on whose was best. He eventually pushed me down from a high place and I died. Lucy Kempeltown, 1950-1985, antique trader's wife. The antique dealer's wife quarreled with her husband and paid for it with her life. You found our wedding record? Please play it. Thank you. Take the paint. But please, don't give it to that lying, deceitful artist. Okay. Uh, maybe. Frankly, everyone here is just like, everyone's lying to you. And it's like, uh huh. Yeah, everyone here is lying. Got it. Trust nobody. Nobody at all. Uh, locket, makeup, sleeping mask, and goblet. Locket and makeup. Apparently that was not her makeup. It's not in there, not in there. 
Um, there's makeup, so where's the locket? I don't know. Oh, of course. There we go. My little Lucy. Thank you. Take the paint. It'll come in handy. Yes, I very much believe it will. And I'll take that as well, apparently. What do you want? Barbara Rose Watson. March 12, 1908 to June 21st, 1986. Millionaire widow. Ah, I can tell just by looking at you that you're not from around here. Do you have any food? An elderly millionaire declares a mysterious hunger strike. Aunt Rose, do you want a mouse? It's the closest thing to food I have. You're a good man, but you don't know anything about food. Throw this away and find me some fruit. I asked for food, right? I'd be happy to buy an apple for some paint. Okay. Jim Buckler plays thumb thimble game with himself and winds up frozen. Jim Buckler, May 21st, 1944 to June 12, 1983, a grocery shop owner. It's just ice. Find some hot water or something heavy with which to break it. Ah, oh, a new customer. You want fruit? But you don't have any money. That's okay. We can play a game. Maybe you'll get lucky and win something. Okay. okay. Ha. Pretty good at this. You can do it faster, I promise. I did not click that. I did not click that one. Ugh, I did not click that. Thank you. Yeah, I clicked the right Good one last for time. You. Take what you want. Take everything. Take the whole apple. Um, well, thanks. Thank you. Take the paint. You know, Lucy was right to lock the artist in the tower. Okay. Yes? Roy Beckins, a former psychiatrist, diagnosis acute paranoid schizophrenia. A psychiatrist becomes a patient of his own hospital. Portrait forced Roy Beckins to commit a suicide. It's so cold, so cold. Light, I need light and warmth. Oh, yes, yes, the sun, bring me the sun. Okay, bye. Uh, let's see here. Everything in the gallery, including me, was a hostage of the painting. The tower was in the process of destroying it, and if I didn't want to find the artist's paints and finish his work, my story would be over. Like all of the artist's victims, psychiatrist Roy Beckins was far from lucky. He became a patient at his own mental hospital after attempting suicide. What no one knew was that his own portrait had persuaded him to try. Cole's paintings twisted Lucy Kempleton's mind, and she lost her life when she argued with her husband Roger, and he pushed her down the stairs of their home. 
A rich collector of antiques, Roger Kempleton was another of the artist's victims. He killed his wife because she was jealous of his portrait and was sent to prison for life. I know what I'd call my story about Jim Buckler, a grocer and gambling addict, Deadly Games. He froze to death in the freezer of his store, in the freezer of his store, while playing the thimble game against his own portrait. The list of the artist's victims included an elderly millionaire, Barbara Watson. She lost her mind and then announced she was going on a hunger strike because she thought she didn't have a penny to her name. She died of starvation one week after going on strike. Okay, where's the last one though? Must be this dude. No. Why can I still click this? Okay. I mean, I can still click her as well. Not that. Okay, maybe I should try just going through this painting then. No, I'm just... Okay, I just get out of here. Out of here again. Um... Okay. Oh, of course. Duh. Butterfly. Here we go, last one. August 14th, 1986. There can't be two different worlds. It's all a dream. The world is united in its diversity. Dead. Alive. Alive. Dead. Who cares? It's time to erase the border and unite our worlds. Time for change is coming. 83 of 100. All right. There we go. Find five different colors of paint and then finish the painting. After that, you'll be able to leave. Boris never failed to amaze me. I doubt I could have done a better job of finishing the painting than he did. Anyway, the stairs were complete, so it was time for me to continue my journey upward. Judging by the entries in Beatrice's journal, she was off her rocker. Over time, the quarrel between she and her sister boiled over into hatred. Beatrice refused to accept Lily's warning about the danger lurking behind the sealed gate. Instead, she wanted to open the gate of the dead in the hopes of learning the mysteries of the underworld and changing the universe. I couldn't allow our worlds to mix. Infinite Passage. <laughs> I'll translate that for you. The light that burns was given to the elders so their wisdom could illuminate the hidden paths. So if you give a light to each elder, they'll show you something useful, like how to get out of here. Why, thank you. Take that, pickaxe head, thank you. Pickaxe broke off in the stone, I bet someone wants to know what's behind this wall. Could you- should you take off the muzzle? What if it bites like the panda? I mean, okay. Can't reach it? I could, but I want to see if you can manage on your own. Oh, really? You're having a creative crisis. Don't I inspire you? Am I a bad muse? Yes, you are. Something is missing here. Maybe an alarm clock? Ooh. What's that? Oh yeah. Um... Can I grab the torch before the cage closes? Perhaps play something heavy on the bot button. Yeah. Ooh, okay. Hidden object scene. Um, here we go. Mm. Oh, another scorpion. Wow, this tower is full of scorpions. Like, seriously.
Bet mouse trap. Harpoon record. Harpoon and fish. Harpoon and fish. You are a fish. Now where is our harpoon? Oh, that wasn't a harpoon. That was a harpoon, was it? Okay. Yeah, I'm not completely convinced that wasn't a har that was a harpoon, but sure. Ooh. Spider. Yuck! Get rid of it now. Yeah, you want fire? Yeah, that's what I thought. We would just, you know, go, go around once. And okay, I was almost there. Thankfully, Boris was still with me, as I didn't understand the ancient language of the Stone Man. I was standing in the passage of eternity, where the dead wander in an attempt to find the exit. I knew the staff for which I was searching was nearby. The Stone Man, the keepers of the passage, said they'd tell me where it was if I brought them five lit torches. Maybe this one is last. I don't know. Anyways, this is where we're gonna take a break for this episode and we'll continue next time. So, you know, stay tuned for that. Thank you all for watching and I'll see ya.